Hello everybody. Uh, this video is about plant-based expression of uh, therapeutic antibodies bevacizumab, which is the active compound of uh, anti-cancer uh, treatment Avastin. Um, my name is Marek. I'm process development scientist at Leaf Expression Systems. And I'd like to cover in this presentation a couple of topics. Uh, briefly outline the biosimilars uh, regulation and market in Europe, um, give some information about Avastin, so the original uh, therapeutic antibodies, um, compare the plant expression and mammalian cell expression of antibodies, and what are the regulatory requirements for plant express antibodies. Currently on the market, there are about 50 to 100 monoclonal antibodies used as therapeutics and some of the best-selling products are listed on this graph here. Uh, we can see that they all uh, bring billions of dollars revenue to the suppliers and this is only a few of them as I mentioned and there are hundreds of those being under different stage of development and slightly less uh, under different stages of clinical research, so being pretty close to, to being authorized for the market. Avastin is one of these. It brought to Ross Genentech $7 billion last year and uh, is, yeah, is in the top 10. And this is one of the reasons uh, why biotech companies get interest in developing their um, biosimilar therapeutic antibodies. Uh, antibody, as any other product, is IP protected, and this protection is normally granted for 20, 25 years. Taking that into account, um, um, the first antibodies ever brought uh, to clinics are now running out of patent, so are already run out of patent. Some of those uh, which would pretty soon run out of protection are listed on this, uh, in this table here, and Avastin is also uh, on this list. So we can see that starting 2019, in July, any uh, biotech company can supply their own version of Bevacizumab to the market. In Europe, slightly later, but taking into account that the development takes at least a couple of years, um, as you can, you can easily imagine that many biotech companies work on um, day versions of Bevacizumab, so on the biosimilar Bevacizumab. Um, currently, there are about 20 bio products approved, and only a few of them are antibodies. Um, the reason for that is probably that antibodies are more complex than uh, single chain proteins. Uh, they consist of two different chains and there is also the, the issue of assembling in a proper way. So it's not as easy as uh, a single chain protein uh, to be produced, but there is already one, uh, one biosimilar antibody approved. So what is Avastin and what's its role in the cancer treatment? Uh, the active compound is Bevacizumab, which is a recombinant humanized IgG type 1. Um, the antibody has 93% of human sequence and 7% of original mouse sequence, and it binds with high affinity to human vascular endothelial growth factor. Um, Avastin was originally authorized for the treatment of colon and rectal cancer, which is quite the uh, second most uh, common uh, type of cancer, and it affects both uh, gender, men and women. Uh, about uh, f the first uh, for men would be uh, lung cancer, for women breast cancer. But the other thing about colon and rectal cancer is that it uh, has uh, high metastasis rate and mortality rate and uh, ranks as one of the most uh, severe cancers because of that. The original treatment uh, before 
um, targeted treatment by antibodies was intravenous 5-fluorouracic folic acid, uh, which was a therapy, chemotherapy developed in 50s. And Avastin was originally authorized as a treatment together with the uh, 5-FF. So this was a cocktail consisting of antibodies and uh, the chemotherapeutic. So how does the tumor develop and what is the role of bevacizumab in this process? Uh, tumor tissue require quite much of nutrients and so as to get the better supply, it produced the VEGF, activating the angiogenesis and better blood supply for the tissue. Uh, VEGF is a natural, uh, natural regulatory uh, signal in the human body. It's just overexpressed uh, in the tumor tissue and tricking this way the, the, um, the hormonal system. So uh, the released VEGF is then blocked by bevacizumab and the access uh, is impossible to the receptor and so the angiogenesis is stopped. And because of that, the supply for the tumor is worse and then the growth is very often inhibited. What is the original manufacturing process for bevacizumab? Uh, so this uh, antibody was originally developed by Genentech in California in a mouse uh, uh, antibody screening uh, studies using a hybridoma generated from uh, uh, cells immunized with the VEGF, the 165 uh, long uh, fragment of the of VEGF. And the mouse antibody was later on humanized, so the mouse-specific residues were uh, replaced with human-specific so as to decrease the immune reactivity in human. The upstream process is a batch, uh, fed batch culture, a uh, big 12,000 liter um, fermentator uh, using CHO cells in the suspension and serum free low protein cell culture media uh, containing recombinant human insulin. So, this is quite a, a big uh, fermenter uh, with expensive media and uh, upstream process. Uh, Takes, consumes quite, quite much of the whole antibody production costs. The second biggest trunk of money um, needed for antibody production is the downstream process, uh, so purification. And the original process consists of three steps, uh, chromatography steps, affinity column, protein A resin, which is to, to bind and clear and uh, concentrate the, the product and remove uh, most of the impurities related to the host cells, so the, the host cell proteins and host cell DNA. Then the, the material is um, left for virus inactivation. And then there is second chromatography step in the flow through mode, anion exchange, uh, to reduce the uh, level of impurities lower and then the last step is cation exchange chromatography um, in a bind and elute mode to concentrate and uh, the material and reduce the, the amount of, uh, of the uh, product and process related uh, impurities. The pool is then concentrated, diafiltrated and formulated into the final buffer uh, so as it's ready to, to fill up an aliquot. Um, the question is, can we make uh, this product in plants? Can we make any antibodies in plants? Um, if you need more information uh, about the scalability of plant production, please have a look on this paper. Uh, it's about very large scale production of antibodies and uh, the costs of manufacturing and things like that. Uh, but yes, we, we can express fairly any protein in plants, and also we can express uh, bevacizumab in plants. How do we uh, express uh, recombinant proteins in plants uh, at leaf systems? 
So we use a transient expression system, which means that we have plant and bacteria component. Um, the plant we are using is Nicosiana bentamiana, uh, and we grow them in a close environment under artificial light and under controlled humidity. Uh, once plants reach a certain age, they're ready to infiltrate, so be exposed for bacteria. The bacteria is Acrobacterium, uh, which is able to infect plants and transfer the gene we introduce to the plant expression system and get it expressed in eukaryotic system of plant. So infiltration is just simply introducing liquid with bacteria into the, into the leaves. Either you can do it using a syringe on a small scale or vacuum by submersing plant in the liquid. And then after a couple of days, you can see which leaves have been uh, successfully infiltrated and potentially have expression. So we collect harvest these leaves and use for the further downstream process. Um, this slide compares downstream process for uh, both uh, mammalian system and plant system. So uh, the panel A shows how you would expect uh, antibody purification to go on in the mammalian system, from the mammalian system, and the three other panels uh, are showing how different people did it for plant system. So what you can notice here immediately is that the cultivation in uh, closed chambers is replaced by growing plants in less controlled environment, so and under very much lower costs. Then the extraction is fairly easy, taking uh, mammalian cells into account. It's just centrifugation and, uh, and that's it. With plants, we have to disrupt the cells and the, the leaves and the cells. So you, we can either do it uh, with the high pressure or with the uh, homogenizer, so blade homo homogenizer. Uh, third step is clarification, which is similar for both uh, mammalian and plant systems. Uh, the size of the filters would be probably different, and the depth filters uh, uh, surface needed would be bigger for plant uh, material. But this process is well defined within the industry, wouldn't differ much. Um, the, Last step of purification is uh, chromatography, and it's uh, exactly the same step you would have for any expression system, either bacteria, mammalian, yeast, or plants. Um, currently, the people are using two to three different chromatography columns to get the product pure, and the same case would be in, uh, with uh, plant-expressed antibodies. The last step would be a formulation to the final uh, buffer uh, and sterile filtration, which is fairly the same. So in our process, we're using blade homogenizers, we're using uh, depth filters, and we're using canonic chromatography uh, systems and columns. Um, here are a few pictures of the recently expressed and purified bevacizumab. Uh, this is the protein A chromatogram. Uh, it is just showing that there is bevacizumab, and we're able to purify that. Material is color-free, and surprisingly uh, shows very low level of aggregates, probably because of the much lower level of antibody with, uh, with the, within the leaf comparing to mammalian cells which overexpress antibodies and then they tend to aggregate. Uh, the gel shows uh, the in-process samples show quite low expression levels, but uh, the product, the purified product uh, after the first chromatography step uh, has purity you would expect after the first chromatography step. Uh, it needs further polishing and uh, depending on the uh, on the usage and requirements, uh, these further steps has, have to be designed later. So the um, reducing gel shows clearly heavy and light chain. Non-reducing gel shows more impurities here.
expressing of recombinant uh, proteins in a plant expression system uh, is fairly easy, but uh, you may have concerns what are the, all the requirements um, to meet before it gets approved for any tri human trials, clinical trials. So the, this job, uh, this work has been done um, a couple of years ago, and the, the first um, plant expressed antibody, this was HIV inactivated antibody, has been approved for phase one clinical trials. And this paper uh, would show you what are the, what were the requirements they had to meet to get there. And the requirements for plant expressed proteins are not that different from those you would know from any other expression system. Uh, so uh, the overall structural integrity and biological activity has to be tested and process related impurities as well as product related impurities. Uh, so uh, techniques commonly known as uh, if for the and the downstream process development would apply also here, such as isoelectric focusing, um, estimating the level of aggregation and uh, purity of monomers, um, endotoxins, which would be lower than you would expect for expression in bacteria and higher, obviously, as you would expect for CHO cells. Viruses, which uh, from plant system are very unlikely to be um, any infectious for humans, so virus clearance studies would be far more simple. Um, and also plant uh, host cell proteins and plant DNA. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this, this video uh, informative. Uh, if you would like uh, to work with us in the future, this is our team in Norwich. Please don't hesitate to hit the link below, get in touch with us, and maybe we can produce some recombinant protein in our system for you to compare it with your current expression system. Thank you.